YouTube. Um, my name is Kayla. My channel name is Kayla Bela. And thank you so much for tuning in. This is my first YouTube tutorial. So I'm really excited about it. Uh, my channel is mostly going to be focused on like crochet tutorials and maybe sewing vlogs just to show like my design process and how I make clothing. So this first video is going to be a tutorial on this blue top that I'm wearing. So here's the full view. I got the original inspiration or reference photo from Pinterest. And unfortunately I couldn't find an existing tutorial on that top. So I decided to just like freestyle it myself. It didn't look super complicated. And thanks to Reddit, I was able to figure out that the bottom like fancy part was the shell stitch, which is just like a variation of the double crochet stitch. So this top was like super simple. It only took me a few hours to work it up. Um, so if you can do the single crochet stitch, which is this top panel right here, and the shell stitch, which is a variation of the double crochet stitch. This is definitely something that you can make. I definitely feel like a beginner at crochet could do something like this. I did change one little detail, which was I added the beads to the strap. I thought that would be like a cute detail. And I already had the beads lying around my apartment. So why not use them for this? Um, but that part is completely optional. If you're not a fan of them, you don't have to add them. So if you want to learn how to make this top, stay tuned. To do this project, you're going to need these materials, yarn, a crochet hook, a darning needle, stitch markers, measuring tape, beads, you only need eight of them. And this last tool isn't really a crochet tool, it's a plastic tag fastener. You can find it on any new piece of clothing. So to start, I chain 18. I usually don't start with a slip knot, I prefer to leave the first chain just really loose. So the first thing I do is take my yarn, wrap it around, put my hook through, and then pull up a loop. That first chain counts as one for me. Now continue until you have 18 chains. So now that you have those 18 chains done, you're gonna work back across that entire row. So chain one for height, and then single crochet across that entire row, skipping the first chain on the hook. Since I didn't start this off with a slip knot, the first stitch tends to be a little loose, but that's not an issue. Once you get to the end of the row, you're gonna chain one for height, and then you're gonna flip your work and single crochet back across this entire row without skipping any stitches. When you single crochet across the second row, you're gonna go under both loops. So you see how there's like a V at the top of the row, you go under both of them. So now for this next part, you're pretty much going to do the same thing that you just did. Um, you're going to single crochet back across that row. And then you're going to continue until you have a rectangle that is wide enough to fit across your entire chest, leaving about like an inch or two of space. So if your chest measurement is 36, your rectangle should be about like 34 and a half inches. I'm going to come back when I have this part done. Okay. So now you should have a panel that is wide enough to fit across around your entire chest, minus about an inch and a half. And for reference for mine, mine is 78 single crochet rows. So at this point, you're going to work back and forth across the side of the panel, um, doing a variation of the shell stitch. So the, step, the shell stitch is two double crochets, one chain stitch and two more double crochets into the same space, and then one regular double crochet into the next space, and then another shell, which is two more double crochets, a chain, 
and then two more double crochets into the next stitch. So since you're doing the double crochet, well, a type of double crochet, you're going to do two, two chains for height. And then starting off with the shell. So yarn over and then do two double crochets. Chain one. And then two more double crochets into the same space. And then one regular double crochet into the next space. And then two double crochets into the next space. One chain and then two more double crochets into that same space. And then one regular double crochet. And then two more double crochets into the next space. One chain. Two more double crochets into that same space. And then one regular double crochet into the next space. So since there aren't really um, actual stitches on the side, you kind of just have to like figure out where you want your spaces to be. Like I try to go each single crochet row as a space. And then if you notice, it's starting to create kind of like a ruffle with this. That's exactly the look that you're going for with this. So you just continue with that stitch all the way across mm -hmm. the row. Just to reiterate what I'm doing, you see the shell stitch forming. Um, you start with one double crochet into one stitch, and then you do two double crochets into the same stitch. One chain, or chain one, sorry, and then two more double crochets into that same space. So there will be a total of four double crochets into one space plus a chain in the middle of those. And then one double crochet into the next stitch by itself. And then two double crochets. Chain one, two double crochets into the same space. One double crochet into the next space, and then two double crochets into the next space. Chain one, two double crochets into the same space. Then one double crochet to the next space. And then two double crochets into the next space. Chain one, two more double crochets into that same space. And then you do that across the entire top. This first row is the hardest row because you're just trying to figure out where all the spaces are. But once you get past this, it does get a bit easier.
I'm gonna come back when I'm at the end of the row. Okay, so now I'm on the last stitch on this first row. So the last stitch is gonna be, oops, just a regular double crochet stitch into the last. Okay, so once you get to the end of the row, you can see there's a little bit of a ruffle starting to form, which is exactly what you want. And then you chain two for height, and then you flip your work. And then you do the exact same thing again. So yarn over and then double crochet into this first stitch. And then you're going to do your shell into that space where the chain is from the previous row. So yarn over two double crochets in that space. And then a chain and two more double crochets into that same space. And then a single crochet into that singular double crochet from the previous row. And then another shell. So two double crochets into the same space. Chain one and then two more double crochets into that same space. At this point, you'll continue to do your rows of shell stitches until the shirt is as long as you want it to be. All right, so I'm on my last shell before the top is mostly done, and I have about 10 rows. That's how long I wanted the flouncy part to be. And so I'm gonna do my last shell. So you insert your hook back in and then yarn over and do two double crochets in the space below. And then a chain stitch and two more double crochets into that same space. And one singular double crochet. So you're gonna end on a singular double crochet. And then you can cut your yarn, um, leaving about like three inches. And then you yarn over and you pull up a loop, but you pull the yarn all the way through. Okay, so now you have your top mostly done. So yeah, it should be looking like that. This part, should be longer than this part. I think that looks better proportion wise. So now um, I'm going to add the back ties and then the straps. So to get started with the back ties, um, you should have like this little floating piece of yarn. You can use that to do one of the first ties. So what I like to do is I'll take my yarn again and I'll reattach it to this part and you can do the magic knot there's like a million tutorials on YouTube about how to do the magic knot, but just to show you the way that I do it, which is the same as everyone else's, um, you cross the yarns like this, and then you bring the working yarn over top, and then you pull it through. You pretty much create like a knot. So the yarn that you need to extend, you pretty much tie the other yarn around it and you pull it tight. And then you take this yarn that needs to be extended again. And then you do the same thing where you pull it under the working yarn and then you tie a knot around that yarn. And then that way you have two knots. So one right here, one right here. And then when you pull the yarns, the knots come together and then you should have like two knots that can't be broken. So then you can cut off the excess because it shouldn't come out in theory, although sometimes it does. Okay, and now you have a yarn that is extended. So then from there, I'm gonna take my hook again and then put it through a hole or like a space that is near 
where the yarn is connected and then pull up a loop as if you're trying to crochet. And then you just crochet a chain that is long enough to be your tie. So three. That should be about good for the length of the chain. Um, and then I would just cut the yarn a little bit longer than that. And then we can chain another one and pull the yarn all the way through. So that is, okay. This chain is about like this length. It's a pretty decent amount. You should be able to tie a bow with it. Like that's how, that's the goal length that you want. And then you reattach the yarn at the top of the shirt. And then on the other side, you pretty much do that same chain in those three other places. So you take your yarn again, um, insert your hook into the top uh, back part of this. And then you can cross the yarn and pull up a loop. And then before you start chaining, this end piece right here, the short piece, you would pull that all the way through your loop just so that it doesn't come out. And then you can pull the yarn tighter if you want. Well, you should. And then you can chain with the other piece. Okay, so I think that's about the same length, maybe a little longer. Let me take a few chains out. And now I'll come back when all the chains are done. Okay, so now I'm on to everybody's favorite part of crocheting, which is sucking the loose ends. Um, so what you need is your darning needle, or you probably could use a sewing needle if you wanted to, as long as the hole is big enough that the yarn could fit through. So you just insert your yarn, your yarn through the needle. Okay, and now that it's like secure and probably gonna fall off, um, you just start sucking the ends wherever they can go. There's no real method to this part. It's just whatever works for you, so. Okay, so usually if I go like forward a little bit, I like to go back so that it will have a harder time coming out. So at this point, you need to continue tucking all the loose hanging pieces. So the four back ties, those will have to be tucked in too. Okay, so for this last part, you actually need to put the top on, tie all the back ties so that you can mark where you want your straps to lay. So this part is completely up to the designer. If you want your straps to be a little closer together, that's totally fine. I personally prefer them to be a little wider. I just think it looks a little better on me. And so I used a stitch marker and marked um, where I want one of the straps to hit. And you only need to do it on one side because what you do on one side, you're gonna do the exact same thing to the other. So I have one stitch marker here. And then I also have another one on the back. And then the last thing you can do is measure the length from here over your shoulder to the back stitch marker. And that is gonna be the length of your strap. So now we're onto the straps and I have one strap done, which I did off camera. And we have the stitch markers in place for the other strap, one in the front, one in the back. So I made this top before in a different color. And I knew from that, that I wanted the straps to be around like 15 and a half inches. So what I did was I cut a piece of yarn um, that was a little more than double that. So 15 and a half inches, the strap should be, or this piece of yarn should be about like 33, 34 inches just to leave room to like tie it at the end. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your crochet hook that you've been using the entire time and insert it in the front stitch marker and pull one side of the yarn all the way through. So now you have the yarn on one side 
and one piece on the other side. And from then you can take the stitch marker out because at this point it's kind of in the way. So this next part is completely optional. It depends on whether or not you like the beads. But to add the beads to the strap, you're going to use this tool right here. It's not like an actual crochet tool. It's a plastic tag fastener that um, connects like a tag to any new piece of clothing. And there's probably a better way of doing this, but this is just what works for me. So I fold it in half. And then if you hold on to the end where like it's not uh, connected and insert it through your bead, you can use this to thread the yarn through the bead. So you take your yarn, both yarn pieces, and put it through the threader or beater, whatever you want to call it. And then you pull the side that you were holding on to through, and that way you'll have your bead attached to the yarn. I think there is a tool that actually does this. I'm not sure what it's called, but I just don't have one laying around. So this is just um, something that you might already have in your house that you can use. So once again, just holding on to the side that isn't attached, insert it through your bead, insert your yarn through the open hole, and then you pull the side that you're holding on to through the bead, and now you have your beads on your yarn, like that, which is exactly what you want. So you do that for all four beads. Um, two of the beads are gonna go to the front of the top and then two of the beads are gonna go on the back. So you can flip your work and you still have this one stitch marker in the back where you want the strap to attach. And so you take one side, just one side of the yarn and insert your crochet hook through this piece. I'm just going to remove the stitch marker now because once you don't need them anymore, they're just in the way. And then you pull your yarn through that part. So at this point, you kind of need to re-measure your yarn so you can know exactly where to tie it. So two of these beads are gonna go to the back, so I'm just gonna move them just so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna take my measuring tape and re-measure the front strap, I mean, this strap, to make sure it's the same length as this one, just to be sure. So that's about seven. Okay, so actually my strap is about 14 inches, but that's totally fine. Um, I'm just pull the yarn. And then I'm gonna tie it at the seven. So I would do about three knots just to be safe. So at this point, you can check it again. I only did two, so I'm gonna do three. I'm gonna do one more. But yeah, those straps look pretty even in my opinion. And then so I'm gonna do one more knot just to make sure it's as secure as possible. Perfect. And then from here, you can use your darning needle to tuck the ends in. Okay, so for the last step to completing the top, you just need to tuck the hang pieces on the straps into the top so that they're not visible. You don't want them to stick out. So you take your darning needle and then you thread it using like the hang pieces. And then you just tuck the ends whatever way works best for you. Okay, and try to get the knot like as close to on the top as possible so that it won't stick out. Okay, 
so now that one is in. So you can pretty much just cut the loose piece off. So now you can move two beads from the front to the back and that strap is completely done. So you would do the same to the other strap as you just did to that one. And I'm going to do that part off camera. So that completes this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching to the very end. I really appreciate the support. Um, if anything wasn't super clear, you can comment below or message me on TikTok or Instagram at Kayla Bela, and I'll be sure to answer. But thanks again for the support. Um, please like, subscribe, share, comment, all of that. Thanks.